Today we're going to continue playing with panning noise and use it to make some cartoony fire. One of my favorite things for shader effects is layered panning noise, something we used in the volumetric clouds video. So let's see how we can apply that to the classic recipe of tune fire. One quad, no particles, and all the motion is done in shader. Simple and effective. Here's the layered panning noise setup that's pretty much the same no matter where I use it. You have one texture object that's split into two, each one with a controllable scale and panning speed floats. Blend them together at the end. Here I'm just multiplying them. What we're after is a grayscale animated texture that has blended areas of light and dark that we can then later apply a step cutoff to in order to create a more hard edged cartoony effect. You can use a cloudy noise texture, Perlin noise texture, or for something a bit more flame like, here's one full of dark holes that's referred to in technical circles as Swiss cheese noise. Panning both copies of the noise upwards at different speeds and multiplying them together gives this texture. Then we simply blend that with a mask texture, something to define the overall shape of the fire. Here I've added it in first to boost the fire towards the middle, and then afterwards multiplied it on top to contain the animated texture into the classic tapered flame shape that we all know and love. This grayscale texture is now ready to tunify and add color to. There's two ways we can add color and posterization to this fire, both with different pros and cons. One cool way is to use a texture gradient that maps to the various grayscale values. To do this, Paint up a nice stepped colourful gradient with the colours you want towards the middle of the flame on the right side of the texture and the colours you want on the outside of the flame towards the left. You can also paint in the alpha channel to define the overall shape of the fire. Then simply pipe the layered panning noise grayscale texture into the U channel of the gradient's UV coordinates. The brighter the pixel it is on the grayscale, the more towards the right of the gradient it will sample as the U texture coordinates is from 0 to 1 from left to right. Another way I like to colorize the fire is to apply two step cutoffs to the animated grayscale texture. The first to define the outside shape of the flame, and the second to define the inner section of the flame. A step cutoff makes any pixel above the set value into pure white and any pixel below it into pure black, so it's perfect for making hard edges for a cartoony look. The first step cutoff goes into the opacity clip input. The second step cutoff will break the remaining flame into two sections. And we can take these two sections and multiply each of them by their own color and then add them back in together. For a bit of extra color control, I like to blend the outer color into two via a vertical gradient using the V texture coordinate. You can use a smooth step to define the blend between these two colors. And that's the basics of the Toon Flame visuals. But another nice addition I like is to also multiply this by the soft grayscale version of the flame, just to add a bit of extra shading into the mix. This is the standard setup I'll use for a lot of these adjustable sliders before a multiply, adding 0 to 1 on a slider, then clamping it between 0 and 1. That lets you fade the adjustment in or out. There's just one more thing I like to do for this shader, and that's to multiply in some depth fade in order to blend the flame with any nearby geometry, such as the ground or the campfire model. This is the difference between it being on and it being off. On, off. On, off. Much nicer. If you're using forward rendering, you need to have a shadow casting light in order to get a depth pass on the camera. If you don't, then you can force it to render depth by having this script on the camera, where you manually set the camera's depth texture mode to depth texture mode dot depth. Now, one last cool tweak to this effect is to make it a camera facing billboard, and also to push the quad towards the camera slightly. This will give the flame a bit more volume, so that when you rotate around it, it overlaps whatever is on fire a bit more. And we're done, we made fire. It's a simple and classic shader that everybody can enjoy. If you like what we covered today, please like and subscribe and ring the bell and God knows what else I should ask you to do because I really need to read up on YouTube more. If you really liked it and want to get the source files for this tutorial, you can support me on Patreon at this link right here. There's also a free write-up linked in the video description, so go check that out for some old school text and GIFs. Thanks for watching. I love games! See you next time.